Full disclosure, if I sound a little giddy at times, it's because the subject of this movie has become one of my favorite living artists. Oh, should we, can we start over? No, okay, hi, I'm Beth Ann Parker. Welcome to my second show at Gross McLeaf Interwoven. Three years ago, I made a movie about Beth Ann's first show at Gross McLeaf and extolled her visionary qualities. This show, I think, is even better. I asked her to tell me about it. This show, Interwoven, is a collection of my work from 2023 to 2024. 46 paintings that record both time and place alongside my conscious and subconscious memories. The work takes on a domestic narratives, spiritual narratives, and the land and the rural areas that I live in. It toggles between abstraction and representation and holds a lot of symbolism to carry out different types of metaphors and parables that a reader can interpret in their own ways. That was an interesting slip. You said the reader, because I think in a sense you do have to read these paintings yeah. and you may not even understand the language, but you get the sense that they're very, very meaningful. That is absolutely fantastic because we usually do so the viewer and for these readings I, for these readings, for these paintings, I do read them. I work in a very subconscious way and then I'll move myself back from the painting and read it. Try to see what's in there, what the painting's trying to tell me and very much uh, the visual language is my language. Some of your paintings seem a little more abstract than I've seen in the past. With abstraction, I'm freer to use the materials and focus on the materials themselves, what they are saying of my feelings that I'm trying to project out. And the forms, the colors, the tactileness, I'm a little bit more focused into those areas instead of a specific representation of the observation. It's more of an internal observation happening. What's your name again? Brooke. Brooke. What do you think about your mom's art? Yeah, I think her art is amazing. She always takes me to the studio to help her with photoing the work and on any suggestions on what it should be and how I see her art. I love how she gives it a abstract kind of look but not really and it keeps a lot of the realistic detail in it too. What do you think it's about? What is she trying to tell people who are looking at it? I think she's trying to tell them about what's inside herself. What it's like to live in the country. And some things in her past. Does she talk about herself as a little kid? Does it sound different from the way you're growing up? Yes and no. She talks about it, not always, but kind of often. She shows me a lot of pictures of her old pets and how she always loved art. And she always tells me to express myself however I want, just like she does. Hi, my name is Seth Parker. I'm Beth Ann Parker's husband. Tell me about how you guys live. We try to stay in touch with the natural world. So we try to grow a lot of our food and there's hunting and fishing to supplement. We just enjoy being part of nature, working with nature instead of against it. Beth Ann, can you talk about this one? It seems emblematic of the entire show. That painting's called Fragments. It was seven different paintings. So there's a number of layers underneath. 
And a lot of the paintings are worked in that way because I think of them almost as a journal. The way that we would record our experiences or our feelings, nothing is ever erased, but instead a new feeling, a new day, a new exploration is then put on top of it. So it has collapsed for me a year of time within one space. What you see on the forefront is the most recent, but I see a good eight pages past. There's something so mysterious and evocative about those wheels. Those wheels are all intricately stitched together and mended together. I have a lot of quilts in my house. It's part of my visual language. And, and when I've been thinking about this work and how paint works together alongside the alchemy of mixing and everything else, I think about binding and I think about hemming and a lot of the structures within the paintings and within my life, I've been reanalyzing this year. To really understand them, I have to break them down and I have to sew them back together as well. Regarding the alchemy of everything else, I love how Beth Ann's tiny stitches are not made out of thread, they're made out of paint. Ever since I met her, Beth Ann and her family have lived in the country almost like 19th century pioneers. Are you a pioneer woman? I don't really think so. <laughs> At the end, it seems very seductive to get away from constant scrolling of phones and the internet, which most of us are trapped by. Help us. Tell us what to do. How should we live? <laughs> yeah, so um, not completely off the grid, but certainly rural. And there is a great amount of discipline that you need to take into your own hands, into your own life to move away from those things and to just recognize the small daily practices that you can infuse your life with through rituals and through routines that will keep you deeper rooted within yourself, within present observation, within the land. See what ignites your soul and hold on to that instead of what's been guiding you otherwise. You have to take power for yourself. Speaking of power, I heard that your daughter is about to have her first art show at age, what? Ten. <laughs> yes, she just had it, which was wonderful. She just had an opening. We're so thrilled for her. She is more prolific than I am. She's amazing, and she comes into the studio and works too. And so we're looking at more spaces for her as well. And it's just been a joy to see her grow and progress in her work as well. How would you describe your your artwork? What kind of stuff do you do? Usually things that relate with the forest, drawings about nature, and cartoons most of the time. You live out in the country, mm -hmm. and do you grow your own food and that kind of stuff? I don't do the growing, but it does taste about the same as something you would buy from a normal grocery store but apparently you can't get fresh venison from the grocery store. And Brooke bagged her first deer at age nine. Did you feel guilty at all? Not really. <laughs> what, did you eat them? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, it was a doe, which I've never had doe deer before. It was probably a, my favorite. Oh, boy, you are, you are a chip off the old block of your mother and father. I did ask her if she felt guilty, and she instantly said no. Well, we know where our food comes from. It's pretty easy to go to a grocery store and pick up meat and not have the connection to what the animal had to go through to put that piece of meat on your table. By hunting the meat ourselves, it really puts us very closely connected. And your kids, do they embrace the lifestyle? It seems like your daughter does. To an extent, it's a lot of work, but I don't think that they would trade it. So is your home a tech-free zone? For the longest time, we didn't have internet at all and no TV, but our hand was forced to get internet when COVID happened and the school told us we needed to do online schooling. 
We do keep it pretty restricted. It's turned off a lot of the times. We still don't have a TV per se, except for a DVD player. So your kids, what do they do for entertainment? They make it, <laughs> they make their entertainment. They'll read, play around outside. They do get some internet time. We're pretty avid rock climbers. We like going out and exploring the wilderness. I hope this wonderful example of lifestyle reaches out to YouTube land. Stop watching my videos and go live off the land. <laughs> it's hard work, but it's totally worthwhile. When you and Beth Ann first got together, was she an artist? Yes, she was a student, but always had the natural ability and continued her schooling to be able to hone that and really develop uh, into what you see today. I think she's the real deal. I rarely see artists as good on so many levels as Beth Ann. She just is constantly creating and constantly developing her technique. And I really think she's got it nailed down. Beth Ann, I first saw your work when you graduated from the Pennsylvania Academy, and it just keeps getting better and better. You just give the viewer something like magic. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that it speaks in that way. I feel so blessed and so honored. And I just come to you with great appreciation and thanks and everyone else as well who has supported along the way. So life is good? Yeah, life is good. Life is continuously changing and growing. And as the seasons, I look forward always to the one we're in and the next one to come. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs>